welcome to our virtual briefing on advancing the right to reparations for survivors of CRSV in Iraq. It's me, Farida Falaf, Naji ACD, and Estabad Daesh, or I said, Munata Matrida Alamia. My name is Farida Khalaf, a ZD survivor from ISIS enslavement and head of Farida Global Organization. I'm very grateful to IOM Iraq and Germany for the kind invitation for this important briefing. Yazidi survivors law, as I said, was adopted on March 1st in Parliament of Iraq. My name is um, Pia and I'm part of the team at Havar Help. Our organization was founded on the ashes of this very genocide. Um, in 2015, our chairwoman, Dusan Tekov, traveled to her ancestral homelands of Sinjar to kind of document what was happening to her people and to other minorities at the hands of ISIS. Um, and she made a documentary film about it. Um, and when she returned, as you can imagine, um, she was a changed person and she vowed to kind of dedicate her life to advocating for justice and to making sure that nothing like this uh, can ever happen again to any group or minority. And this is how Havar Help was born. Um, and today we run kind of multi-ethnic and multi-religious projects in Iraq and Germany. And many of the women that we work with um, have been living in IDP camps for almost uh, seven years, which is an issue that Farida also mentioned. What we do is we offer psychotherapy and counseling, uh, literacy and language courses um, to help these women one day hopefully get a job and build livelihoods and be able to maybe even build their own businesses one day. Um, and the women often tell us, you know, we don't need anti-anxiolytic pills, we don't need anti-depression pills. Um, what we need are jobs and justice and security. And they want to see their kidnappers and rapists and murderers put behind bars. They want to be able to send their kids to school. They want to be able to send their kids to school without having to fear for their lives. Um, they want to live in dignity and build a life outside of the camps one day, um, which are all pretty normal wishes I think we all take for granted, really. Um, and these women, they, they often have pretty strong opinions as well, I have to say. Um, and so we think at Havar, they, they really need to be given a seat uh, at the decision-making table. And this is why in our projects, we spend a lot of time um, talking with our participants rather than about them and actually asking them what they need uh, since they know best. And this is why I'm so glad that IOM is also releasing the study today because it's really based on interviews with the women themselves and time spent sitting with them and hearing their voices. I think the passing of this bill, uh, the so-called Yazidi Survivors Law in March, is a huge milestone. Of course, the law is not perfect, which has also been said, even though it's, it's a hugely important step towards redress, of course. So one of the main weaknesses that we see uh, is that the bill doesn't apply to some of the most vulnerable victims of the conflict. Um, and that's the children born out of uh, sexual violence. Uh, nor does it cover men and boys who suffered sexual violence, which they did. Um, just ask these women and about their sons and their brothers and they can tell you. And all these victims that kind of fall through the cracks of this bill, they are going to have to be supported through other interventions like special quota programs, for example. In order to turn this legislation um, into reality for survivors, we all have to help develop tangible concepts on what implementation will look like. Um, and for this, for example, we need rural field offices um, to be opened, especially in Sinjar, uh, to support survivors in making their claims and to make them aware that there is this bill where they can actually make a claim. As for Sinjar, the way forward really needs to include a sort of Marshall Plan. But what's perhaps the most important aspect um, for this way forward is um, what survivors most yearn for, which is legal justice uh, through accountability. And this really needs to be a priority. There are no uh, administrative programs that could ever substitute for justice. And it's incredibly important for the healing process. Um, we hear this again and again from all the women we speak with. Most of these women, as has also been mentioned, uh, are still facing long-term displacement, poverty, persecution, and many are still missing, like Farida also said, to this day. And so the bill can and should only really be seen um, as the very beginning of a long and probably very challenging road ahead.